everybody. In this video, we're going to be going over how to dynamically update a website's favicon, which is this little icon up here. So, uh, as we can see, by default, it's on green, but if we click down and decrease this value, we can see it dynamically changes to red. So, and if we go back, we can see we can go back and forth with it. So this can be a pretty useful feature uh, if you say have like a chat app or something and you have somebody who's in another tab, you can dynamically update this when they receive a message and it can kind of give them a little notification to uh, come back to your app. Uh, a more advanced example, which I might do in a future video, is show how to make a fully uh, animated favicon. So if I click this, you can see now that there's some different ways that you can make it so that instead of being a static image, you can cycle through multiple images and basically create an animation effect. But for this video, we're going to stick to just a basic switch between these two images. So to start, what we're going to want is just any React.js environment. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Code Sandbox, and I'm going to be using Bootstrap for styling, so if you want to uh, if you're using Code Sandbox, you can just click Add Dependency and type in Bootstrap and then import it. If you're just using a normal Node.js environment, you can install that with npm install. In addition, uh, you're going to want to make sure you have at least two images that you can use to change your favicon. For me, I just went into Google and I typed in green circle and red circle. And these are going to be what we switch between for our image idea rename these so there's not a space there. Uh, in addition, you're going to want to go into your wherever you have your uh, favicon. This is what it has right here. It's the rel shortcut icon. And we're going to want to add an ID to this. And we're going to set it equal to favicon. And this is what's going to allow us to grab this element and by default with create react app it has this set to this public URL we're going to want to change this to the path to our our uh, file here our image so we're just going to do green circle dot png and then save that so now if we open this up in a new window we're going to click out of this we should just get that green image so now we can go and add in our HTML and our logic and we can make sure so we can change that dynamically. So let's go back to our index.js and what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of this and we're going to change it. We need to use state so we're going to change this from a functional to a class based component. So we're going to do class app extends react.component and then for now we're just going to do render, we're going to do our HTML first and then we'll deal with all the state and the logic and stuff like that. So we're going to do render, return, uh, and then we're going to do a h1 tag. Actually we're going to do a div to wrap it all. And then inside that we're going to do an h1 tag for our title. We'll just do dynamic favicon tutorial and then below that we're going to do two buttons for our increase and decrease we're going to use bootstrap so they don't look so ugly we're going to set that to BT button primary actually button success that'll give us a green button and then below that, we're going to do button danger to decrement. And we'll just do increase and decrease. So now, uh, and we're also going to want to make inside here, we'll do an h2 tag. And this is going to be where we'll dynamically do that state update. So let's save that. And now we can move on to see if it updates over here. Okay, so our HTML is good, and now we can go and create our functional component up here. So first thing we gotta do is create a constructor. And we can pass in props, we're not gonna use it, but just for good practice, we'll pass that in. We're gonna do super 
props. And then below that, we're going to create our state. So this dot state equals an object, and we're just going to do count equals zero by default. And now we're going to create our increment and decrement function so we can increase that value. So increment equals a our arrow function. And all we got to do is this dot set state, and it's going to be an object. And we count equals this dot state dot count so the previous value and then plus one and what that'll do is whatever values in here it'll automatically increase that by one and we gotta remove this we're getting an error because I I'm accidentally inside this constructor object so we gotta make sure we're outside that and then we can just reuse this and instead of increment will be decrement and instead of adding one, we're just going to subtract one. Now if we save, we should. Oh, we need to pass in our value here so we can see it actually changing. So h2, and then brackets, and we're just going to do this, dot state, dot count. And what this is basically going to draw in that value. So if we save, we get a, uh, so we got our zero. Oh, we need to pass in our, we didn't pass the on click function. So right now these functions are getting called because we have to go down here and just do on click. So pass in this dot increment. And for the other button, we'll do on click and pass in our dink decrement function. So we save now. We can see we got our this set up. Now the only thing we have left to do is on the state update, we need to basically dynamically change our favicon now. So to do that, we're going to use a life cycle method that comes with React, and it's going to be called component did mount, or actually no, did update. And then inside that, Basically what this means is that every time the state updates, this function will run, and we can adjust inside that our favicon. So the first thing we need to do is grab it, grab that DOM element, so we're going to do const favicon equals document.getElement.byid, and then favicon. And that'll be whatever you named this in your HTML, since the ID is favicon here, but you could change this to whatever. And then as long as you type that in there, it'll grab that element. So this is just vanilla, normal JavaScript. Uh, you can do this with React without React.js. And then below that, we're going to do if this.state.count is less than zero, we're going to change this to favicon.count href and what this is doing is changing this value right here dynamically so uh, instead of by default it's green circle and what we're going to do is update that value to this red circle so just equals and a string red circle dot png and you could all you'll have to do is whatever image you want to change it to you can change it to this value and then delete it we can console that log at favicon. We can see how it changes here. We can see how the value updates. And below that, we're going to do else. If it's anything else, we're just going to set this value to the green circle. Basically, if it's above zero, it'll be green. And the reason we have to add this is because if we didn't add this else, when we went down below zero like this, if we went back up, it wouldn't change if we didn't add in this else statement right here. So if we save that and go refresh over here, we should get our proper changes. So, and there we go. So that's basically all I want to do for this tutorial. Some ideas of some ways you could extend this. If you wanted it to be more dynamic, uh, you could do, instead of doing just a string like this, you could use a backtick 
and a string template and you could dynamically based on the state value you could do something like this right here where you would append so instead of red circle you could do a dollar sign and then you could do this dot state dot count so then you could uh, get directly get the value of uh, the state so if it was like negative two you could change it depending upon that you could have red circle two or green circle two three four five and based on the exact state value you could show a different image so that's one thing you could do if you had like a chat app instead of showing a green dot you could do uh, like show numbers up here images with numbers on them so you could show a more precise amount so that's one thing you could do uh, you could also like I was shown earlier and I might do that in a follow-up video where you could cycle through an array of images at a set interval like every uh, one tenth of a second and you could create an animation effect as well so uh, if you're interested in that hit subscribe but for now that's all I'm going to cover in this video thanks for watching